Well, thank you very much for inviting me to present our research at this meeting. Um, I'm very honored to be here. And there is a little uh, confusion about me being from the US. I'm actually from the Netherlands. Um, but the confusion about the US will be solved at the end of my presentation. Um, so uh, I work for ProQR. And as a company, we work on RNA medicines. Uh, what is this? Well, as you can see in a healthy cell, there is DNA. And as uh, Peter van der Acker uh, described, um, there's RNA made from this, and this encodes for a protein. This is the part about the cookbook um, where a recipe is making you an apple tart. Um, when there is a diseased cell, th there is some mistake in the DNA, which is copied into the RNA, uh, and now there is no protein made. This is the recipe where a part is missing, and suddenly it doesn't make sense anymore, so no apple tart. Um, what we do is actually similar to what Peter described. We repair at the RNA level. So the DNA, is there is still a mistake. But in the RNA, we are doing something with an AON, uh, which makes an exon skip. And as a result of that, the recipe now makes sense. There is a protein, which is an apple tart. Um, what we are trying to make is actually a uh, hydrogel, which can be um, put on a, on a wound. And then the skin that um, is growing um, is actually stronger after that. Um, we um, put our, our medicine in this hydrogel. Uh, it will help wound healing. It will um, result in a stronger skin. Uh, and that is what we're trying to develop. So that is the end goal, basically. So um, to go back to the basis, what we are actually doing is looking at collagen 7. And I don't think I have to explain this anymore to you, because Peter did this this morning. It's about the anchoring fibrils that anchor the epidermis and the dermis together. So the epidermis is strongly attached to your body. Um, and these are made up of collagen 7. So um, normally, you have a uh, pre-mRNA, as we call it, which is spliced into an mRNA. Um, and this exists of so-called exons. Um, all of these exons together, they encode the collagen 7 protein, which is making the anchoring fibrils. In the case of DEB, if there is a mutation somewhere in the DNA, then this is in one of the exons um, that get assembled into the mRNA. Now there is no protein made. It's the apple tart that's not there anymore because of the recipe having a fault. Um, and you get a blister. What we're trying to do is uh, get out some part of the recipe so that the recipe makes sense again, and you get the anchoring fibrils, the apple tart. Um, this is a schematic overview of uh, actually the RNA um, that is making up the collagen 7. And you see a, some color coding here, and this is just if I refer back to Peter's presentation, this is the chain that actually links the bike to the tree. So there's two, the, the start and the end are very important elements which are needed to anchor the chain. But the length of the chain, which is the orange part of this graph, um, can vary quite a bit with, with, the, with the chain still being functional. And exon 73 is the exon that we are working on, uh, is actually in the middle of this chain. So we just have a somewhat shorter chain. So in principle, in theory, this exon skipping should lead to a functional protein. We also looked in practice if this really works. And these are somewhat complicated graphs, but they show that the proteins that collagen 7 is bound to for anchoring are actually still bound in the collagen 7 if exon 73 is missing. Um, we have also looked at a mouse model uh, which is a mouse that has very little collagen 7. It has a DEB phenotype, um, so the skin is uh, blistering very easily. And we replaced, or we injected, actually, uh, C7, the collagen 7 protein, without exon 73, and see that it's really functional, just as the wild type is. So for now, it looks that everything is OK for doing this um, modification uh, to the recipe, so to speak. So um, 
Most of our research is done in human skin equivalents, and this is actually a reconstituted piece of skin um, which is grown in the lab. And as you can see in the more pinkish graphs, uh, where you have a human skin um, compared to an HSE, is that um, these, these um, HSE have the similar morphology as a normal human skin. And we also see there, and it's difficult to see, that's why the red arrows are there, that anchoring fibrils are present in the HSEs. So this seems to be a good model to test um, if our medicine could work. So um, what we studied is whether uh, the medicine is actually taken up um, in the HSEs. And here, our product, our, our medicine, is a yellow color. So what we made here is in the HSE, we made a blister-like wound. So we removed the epidermis from part of the HSE, and we applied the hydrogel as we made it um, and want to use it in a clinic. Um, as you can see, there is lots of uh, yellow, even it's, it's becoming orange, so much is there um, in the dermis. But if you look at the wound edge, there is not a lot in the epidermis. So the epidermis that is still there doesn't take it up, but the dermis does. Um, we have also seen in uh, the line graph that you see next to that, um, that once you put QR313, which is our medicine, um, you can see the exon skipping. So you see a huge band in the untreated where exon 73 with the mutation is still present. And then if you put QR313, you see a somewhat lower band, which is just uh, exon 72 and 74 combined. So exon 73 is not there anymore. So the fold that is in exon 73 is also removed. We did this also um, by looking at somewhat uh, at, at all the different parts of the HSE. So we looked separately at the dermal wound, which is below the wound that we made, the dermis, which is next to that, but also the epidermis. And we see that actually it takes a little while for this to work. As you can see, after two weeks, there's quite a bit uh, of exon skip, around 20% we can make. Um, but uh, if you look at two days, there's only very little. So the medicine takes a little while to work, but once it works, and this is the last bit of the graph where you see two weeks plus two weeks, so we treat for two weeks and then we stop treatment for two weeks. Once it works, it keeps on working for a long time. And that is what we call a half-life. So the medicine stays present in the skin for a very long time, which means it can work also if the treatment is stopped for maybe yeah, weeks at least, maybe months. We don't know that, but... So uh, this is going back to individual cells. It's the uh, same graph that you've seen with Peter also. So there is a wild type where the collagen 7 protein is green. If there is patient cells, there's no collagen 7 protein. But if the, we do uh, treat with QR313 and the mutation is in exon 73, you see that C7 protein is coming back. Um, so this is all on um, the, the how it could work and that it works. Um, of course, we also want to want to uh, use it or or uh, deliver it where it's needed, and it also needs, of course, to be tolerated. So it shouldn't be uh, hampering wound healing per se, for example, which can also happen. So we looked at that, or or make make uh, inflammation or things like that. So we looked at that actually using pigs as a model. So pig skin is very similar to human skin. And this is uh, the most similar skin we can find in animals to human skin. And we looked at a lot of parameters to determine that. Um, and um, this is actually why we use pig to look at this. So here we have actually made small wounds on a, on a pig where we removed the epidermis but left the dermis to mimic DEB wounds. Um, the, our medicine is here in red um, and um, the cells are, are in blue basically. So um, if you look at the biopsy taken at day two, you see that there is no epidermis but there is dermis and that it is completely red, which means 
that the medicine has uh, penetrated into the skin also in a live animal, because before we have only shown it in an in vitro situation. Um, if you look at day seven, you see that there's a big wound scab on the, on the wound, and there is newly grown epidermis under that. And this newly grown epidermis is very red. It means that the newly grown epidermis has taken up the QR313, the medicine, and you can also see that in the enlargement. So this actually means that if um, that the medicine is taken up very quickly in the dermis, and that in, if the new epidermis is growing, it also takes up a lot of the medicine. So it could work also there, which is, I think, a very good thing. Um, as I said, we tested tolerability. Uh, the wounds appeared normal. They had a normal healing process, um, irrespective of, of how much of the medicine we applied on the wound. So it doesn't do anything in healthy skin, so to speak. So just to summarize all of this, um, QR313, our medicine is effective in exon exclusion of exon 73. Um, it diffused in a blister-like dermis, and we see a high exon skipping in the skin models that we grew. The protein, if it lacks exon 73, it is functional, as far as we can determine, uh, fully functional, just as wild type and it is delivered in the dermis and newly formed epidermis in vivo. This is in pigs. The formulation of the hydrogel, we worked on that quite a bit, so the medicine is stable in that, and it works very well. The concentration is high enough that we can make uh, a high exon skip in, in the skin models, at least. Uh, we did a lot of other work, mode of action metabolism of the medicine toxicology, and they support the dose and dose regimen of the clinical study. So we did actually uh, start the clinical study. Uh, the study is called WINGS. It's currently running. And it is a blinded uh, research, which means that um, there is a hydrogel with the medicine and a hydrogel without the medicine being tested. Um, what we uh, thought of is that since DEB patients have mainly more than one wound. One wound will be tested with the placebo and one will be tested with the active medicine. Um, we uh, advise two or three doses per week depending on the routine of care and we look at a lot of parameters. So of course the exon skipping is important, the C7 protein is important. Anchoring fibrils are important. Of course, safety and tolerability is very important. We look at wound healing, um, at reblistering, and we also have a lot of assessments every week uh, where the patient is actually assessing uh, the wound status by a short questionnaire, which we have on an, on an uh, iPhone, actually. The study is, is uh, a small study, four to eight patients. You need to have a mutation in exon 73 because that is the part that is removed. Um, and there is a staggered enrollment by age. So the study is starting 12 and over and then lowering the age from six to 12. Um, there's four weeks treatment of the wound area and there is a biopsy uh, to look at exon skipping, and there is then the eight weeks follow-up because we know that the compound is active for much longer than the treatment period. So we do a follow-up observation, and at the end of that we do a biopsy for anchoring fibrils and C7 protein. Um, the, the study is running in a lot of countries. It's in the US, it's um, uh, running in Spain and in France, and there is also approval for UK uh, Germany and Czech Republic. Um, actually, after treating two patients, we did uh, do a small analysis uh, where we actually found um, that um, we had two patients, because we were also blinded to the study, we didn't exactly know what was going on. We had two patients which had two wounds each, so both had a placebo and a QR313 treated wounds. Um, there were four weeks of treatment, and uh, the dosing for both patients was three times a week. Um, 
we looked at all the endpoints that we defined and we looked at the biopsies that were taken. Um, and as a result of that, it was determined that a separate company was funded. This company is called Wings Therapeutics um, and it's dedicated to this study and this medicine. Um, it continues the clinical trial, so it will enroll another two to six patients to come to a total of four to eight, as we defined before. Um, there will be some amendments to the clinical protocol, what we have learned from the two patients. Um, there, uh, we transfer all the data to the new company, so there is you know, nothing that's kept behind. We find it important that this goes on. And the new team, um, you might know some of them, uh, for example, Mark de Souza is well known in the field. He was inf involved in uh, lotus tissue repair uh, a few years ago. Um, so this is going on, uh, but on another name, you have to look for Wings Therapeutics, www.wingstx.com. Thank you very much for your attention.